Welcome to the fourth episode of Babylon is Burning. Today we talk about do's and don'ts in online dating. Welcome. In the studio today we have Alexander Schouten, or Alex, yep. who is a researcher who studies online dating. So Alex, can you explain to me what is the fundamental difference between offline dating and online dating? Well, I, I can explain it, but I think it may be better to first show a video so that we can see the difference between online and offline dating. Okay. Oh, okay. Are you sure you want to do that? I've seen it a lot. Yeah, I love traveling, so... It's just kind of an old joke. I love jokes. So. All right. Ah, uh, is that a gun? Yeah, I'm a boy. Well, oh, stop, 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 stop. You know, if you stand so close together, people are going to have a tough time telling you apart. But she's my best friend. <laughs> All right. Where's your shirt? Oh, I don't need it. Jeez. It's a little close. Would you like to listen to my poetry? No. Hey, put that out, young man. Smoking kills. I love babies. That's gonna scare boys, you know? They're, they're gonna think it's your baby. I love babies. That's actually great. I really, really think guys are going to have a hard time telling you apart. But we're all so close, and we're best friends. Yeah. <laughs> best means one. You can't all be best friends. <laughs> OK, so we see, I guess, the profile picture process. Yeah, yeah, it's the profile picture process. And you know, I started researching online dating when I uh, uh, was single, and this is what uh, really annoyed me that you have only like a few basic stereotypes, you know, uh, women with glass of wine in the sun uh, on the beach. Um, and, and then I th thought, so that's, that's interesting. So, so many stereotypes and what, what is then the difference between on and offline? Um, I thought from, well, offline we also have those stereotypes, but you can really exaggerate it online. So you can, you can just pick whatever you want to look like. Um, and then display that and see if it comes across uh, the way you like. So there's a fundamental difference in the kind of the self-presentation that you do offline and online? Yeah, yeah, so, so it's, uh, there's an, well, a fundamental difference is just that the technology uh, of online dating uh, uh, gives you the opportunity to uh, present yourself more the way you like. And of course, we, we also do that when we date offline, so we do that now, you know, I'm wearing a jacket, etc., to try to come across somewhat professional, but uh, when I would do this online, we would have more possibility to, to present ourselves the way we want. And would you say that people lie then when they present themselves online? Well, it's not lying. You know, when I go on a, on a, on a date for the first time, I also say that I'm a successful professor, uh, which, which is <laughs> partly true, <laughs> not, not entirely. Um, so so you, you tweak your self-presentation a bit and, as, and you do that online as well. So, so you, uh, when, for example, you make a profile, you pick the most difficult book you have read to come across as intelligent. So it's not lying, it's tweaking. Okay, but then what's kind of referred to in this video is that there are like, these typical ways of, of doing that, that we follow a, a, a standard? Yeah, so, so, so we... Um, and that also sort of mirrors what, what, what we do offline. Of course, we belong to certain social groups and, and, and we want to come across uh, as uh, uh, being uh, attractive to the persons we also find attractive. And that, that results in us using like broader stereotypes to, to get your uh, message uh, across. But so the, the girl who pats the baby on the back, what kind of stereotype is she catering to and what kind of man do you think she is trying to or aspires to find with that picture? Yeah, I, th I, think, I think it's, it's 
caring, you know, that, that, that she's really caring and also probably that she really likes babies and wants babies. Um, and that's also an interesting thing is that I'm, I'm not entirely sure that people always have the other person in mind. So, you know, you saw the guy with the gun and with the shirt off. You al also often see that people think about themselves instead of thinking about someone else. Okay. Yeah, so they're not basically aspiring to be per se successful, but more showing off? Yeah, it's more it's more showing off, and and uh, of course you have the tendency to show off uh, basically always in social situations. Uh, only it it, m it may it's it it may be that 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 in online dating you're forced to think about your own profile, um, and but you also have to keep in in mind who you want to get into contact with, of course, and that okay. may be a bit more difficult with the distance in between. Well, I love to know more about the real tips and tricks that we uh, can use in online dating settings. Uh, but before we go over those, let's first go to a commercial break. Every step online leaves digital footprints. We create a digital self. Today, cultures and societies are shaped by digitalization and globalization. We send chat messages, artists expand their work to vlogging, and we're connected with different people, places, and cultures 24 seven. During our program, Online Culture, you study culture in this digitalizing and globalizing world. Digitalization influences the shape of communication and cultural products. We have always changed and changed our behavior according to the context we find ourselves in. What is new about digital environments is that now we can crop, filter, Photoshop, and in other ways edit our self-representation. Graduate as an independent thinker who will be essential for tomorrow's job market. Visit our campus, www.tilburguniversity.edu. Welcome back to Babylon is Burning. So Alex, tell me more. If I go on Tinder, what are the things that you recommend me to do and what are the things that you recommend me to not do? Um, well, uh, I, I recommend you, uh, um, oh, well, you don't have to do anything. You will get plenty of matches, of course, <laughs> uh, so d don't worry about that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I, I recommend thinking about your uh, uh, audience, so that, that's probably most important. Um, and and you s and um, um, think about who you want to uh, meet, but also think about who you can meet. Um, I, I think it I think it may be uh, uh, interesting and fun to see another video of what people pay attention to. Yeah, sure. Uh, on online dating, what people think they like. So yep. maybe we can show that. Okay, another stereotype: women are into rich men, right? Here on the x-axis represents how much men are liked by women. The right being most liked, left being least liked. On the y-axis, you have average salary each man, um, each job when men have, which I took from Glassdoor.com. The correlation between the two is pretty remarkable. It really is the higher your salary, the more women like you. <laughs> On the side note, there are some exceptions to this rule. There are some jobs, doesn't matter how high the salary is, just don't seem to garner a lot of ladies' attention. And they are engineers, scientists, and <laughs> HR. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah, it's a sad, sad planet. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's a sad story. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's interesting to see that, that we, we, again, act on broad stereotypes. Uh, so it's also if you look at what men value in women, is their attractiveness. And it's also a bit creepy because you, uh, um, you, you think you, you grow along with it as you age, but not for men. They, men value women of 21. <laughs> it doesn't matter how old they are, it's just 21 until it starts becoming creepy, and then they still value women of 21. Uh, so um, um, you see broad stereotypes reflected on online dating. Um, so when you say that I should also care about my audience, what I can reach, then that means that being a 40-year-old woman, old woman, I have to be uh, realistic in what I can <laughs> potentially get <laughs> as a catch. No, I don't. I don't think so. I th I, I think 
Um, it, it, it also depends on the match, you know. You, it, 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 um, are you really interested in those guys that only think about women up who are 21? Um, uh, so there are. Or am I interested in the guys who actually are but pretend they are not? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the other half. Yeah, that's the other half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but of, um, but it, it kind of shows the two things that you should pay attention to uh, for a start is being attractive um, in in the sense of physical attractiveness and and uh, knowing so in, in sense of career or other things that you are liked uh, that, that that may be liked in you. Um, and that serves as kind of the gatekeeper, so especially attractiveness. So you see in a study we did on, on, on Tinder, that when people have to swipe left or right, uh, that you, you see attractiveness as kind of the gatekeeper. And if that's not uh, uh, somewhat okay, then it's immediately left. But even if it's okay, it's not right, then people uh, start thinking of, um, okay, what else can I see? Uh, what, what is uh, his or her job? Uh, what is his or her age? What else is in the photo? Um, ca can I judge personality from the photo? Is so these small cues, but yeah. that nonetheless can have like a, a huge impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be be because that's the second one. So we first judge basic attractiveness, like on physical attractiveness and maybe career attractiveness. So that's the most important. But then we want to form an impression about someone's personality. Um, and we use all kinds of minor cues for that. So, uh, in uh, someone wearing makeup, is someone playing a guitar? Is it is he or she on holiday? And we infer things like extraversion. Okay, uh, so when my friend has a Tinder profile in front of her and it's a really cute guy, but then she says, "Ah, no, he has a cat." Yeah, like that's enough to give some sort of reliable judgment of that person's. Yeah, well, it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be reliable as long as you think it's reliable, you know, because on Tinder you have you have so many ch choices, of course, so you have to make some sort of selection um, in terms of swiping left or right. Okay, excellent. We'll uh, go more in depth after the commercial break. Welcome back to Babylon is Burning. So, Alex, if I initiate a conversation, what's the best opening sentence I can use? Well, the best one is, so me and uh, two of my thesis students have investigated that, the best one is that you have a uh, creative opening sentence that reflects an aspect of the person's profile. So you have to ask a uh, question that reflects something you saw in the profile. And that sounds like uh, the obvious, but it's not that obvious because most of the time opening sentences are like cliches. Uh, you so the aim is to stand out of the crowd, but well also to yeah, show that you're not interacting with 1,000 individuals? Yeah, yeah, show interest. So that, that's what, what works best in developing relations anyways, you're asking questions. Um, and that also helps in opening sentence. So it's indeed showing that you're not just you know copying and pasting um, opening sentences for every match, uh, um, but that you show genuine interest. And so what's an obvious don't? An obvious don't is those things like, hey, or hi, or how are you? Because in many cases, th those don't lead to a conversation at all. Okay. So, so in the study, um, uh, we have, uh, uh, investigated uh, opening sentences from like say I'm, I don't exactly remember I think let's say 25 30 different people and about 500 um, Tinder conversations so those were already matches so people liked each other um, in which one of the two persons said 
uh, an opening sentence, like hey or hi or something more creative. And then only in like half of those or even less, people actually replied. Okay, so, yeah. so a huge number of individuals is just ghosted yeah, yeah, after yeah, yeah. that first sentence. Yep. Yeah, a lot. And yeah. how, how do we explain that? You know, you've made a match, so you've some, in some sense committed yourself already to the well, developing relationship. Yeah, I think there are multiple reasons. So, so one reason is that, peop that, that some people may have many matches, so, so they can just pick and choose from their matches. So another reason is you know, bad opening sentences, so they don't get a reaction and don't lead to a conversation. Um, and also because I think sometimes Tinder is done for you know, fun and not, not even without showing. I, I, I remember a personal anecdote. When, when I got, got single, I, I had really low self-esteem. I felt I will never ever find someone again. And then I started using Tinder and then suddenly I got it, it unimaginable, I got matches. Despite being a professor. Yeah, despite being <laughs> a professor. But you never know how many people swipe you left. You only see the matches. So it, it could be that nine, 99 out of every 100 people swipe me left, but you only see the matches. So it's very good for your, uh, 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 for your self-esteem. So I didn't necessarily even want to date. It was just getting the recognition. So, you know, oh, I, may, I may be attractive after all. So, so that may also be a reason for not, not replying. Okay, and so what about the language that people use? Does language matter? Yeah, language matters um, a lot to, to people who um, s s consider it important. Um, so, so of course, you know, the a profile picture is important. Like in regular online dating uh, or like an offline dating, uh, when we see someone in a bar, we don't see someone's language, we see wha what someone looks like. Um, but, but, but then, we are affected by how someone behaves, and we assess that all for by language use. So the way you construct your profile, and also something like uh, language errors affect your your impression. Uh, that's what we said before, uh, break that that af also affects your impression of someone's personality. So so we we investigated that, and indeed turns out that um, when people make um, uh, language errors, uh, people perceive you as so. If you make typos, people perceive you as being. Um, more sloppy, okay. um, and therefore they like you less. Um, and when you make this grammar errors or spelling errors, people think you're stupid. So you're s you're judged as being less intelligent and also as less attractive. Yeah. So I have to say, I think I, I would be that person who thinks you're probably stupid. So if I'm ever on the market <laughs> again <laughs> and you want to date with me, you know, edit your language. Okay, uh, <laughs> I have a very thick Dutch accent, so. Uh, <laughs> so That's text-based, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so text-based, it's okay, I think. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, Alex, uh, final question. Do you still have a dating profile yourself? No, no, I don't. No, I must admit that I, I, I did have Tinder installed on my phone um, uh, when uh, once I got a girlfriend, but but then I thought I never use it anymore, so it becomes a bit awkward to have it on my phone, and then I uninstall it. Ah. So I don't have it anymore, unfortunately. But may maybe I can convince her that I can install it again <laughs> for research purposes. Yes. <laughs> good boyfriend, good researcher. Also. <laughs> Thank you for watching our show, and we hope to see you for our next show, which is on algorithmic populism and if like me you have no clue what that is then I strongly recommend that you watch. Thank you.